I took a little road trip down into Florida last week, had a lot of fun, kind of a last minute vacation before I start getting really busy this bee season. Um, saw four old friends, a lot of fun. Uh, saw Chris Warner of Indian Summer Honey Farm. Saw Ray Latner of Santa Fe Bees. Saw John Knox of Knox Honey Farm. All of those fellows are migratory beekeepers. And then I paid a visit to Jamie Ellis at the University of Florida. He oversees the bee research lab there. He gave us a wonderful tour and we sat down and talked about research for a little bit. Um, of course, I took the camera along for all of these visits and I was lucky enough to have a friend come along and kind of man the camera throughout the whole thing so I didn't have to worry about that. Greg Burns from Ohio came down and met me and uh, we uh, traveled to all of those people together and had a lot of fun. Greg, Greg is from Zanesville, Ohio, and he's a beekeeper also and has kind of a, I guess you'd call it a homestead beekeeping type channel going on. It's called uh, Nature's Image Farm, and I'll leave that uh, link in my video description if you're interested in seeing his site. Uh, you won't see much of him on the videos because, of course, he was behind the camera, but I was really glad to have him along. Um, it got a lot of footage. I can't stuff this into just a few videos. I thought I might title this series just Florida Beekeepers. Start off with part one, part two, part three, and so on. We uh, visited Chris first, Chris Werner, so I think I'll start there. And I'll probably break his visit into several videos. There was a lot of information there. And uh, it might take me quite a while to get all this stuff out. About to get real busy myself. I'll do the best I can. And of course, I want to start putting out a few videos on what we're doing this spring also. Could be summer before I get all of this stuff out. Um, might not be for everybody. Uh, uh, these are these three beekeepers I visited were all commercial migratory beekeepers. Chris is a uh, Wisconsin, Florida beekeeper. John Knox is a Florida, Wisconsin beekeeper. They both go to California also. And Ray Latner, Santa Fe Bees, he's, uh, of course, uh, a Florida beekeeper, but he also takes bees to California. And uh, I think I'll do Chris Werner first and then move on to Jamie Ellis and probably then post our footage with Ray Latner and end it off with John Knox. John is from Wisconsin, comes down to Florida uh, with his bees every winter, has a second home in Florida. It was all very interesting. It was a wonderful trip. I really enjoyed myself. And I hope I can uh, edit this properly and make all of this stuff interesting for the viewer, too. So anyway, I'm going to start off with Chris Warner. So with, without further ado, uh, we'll start with Chris. Scotty going to get in on this? Her. Pardon me? Scotty's got to get in on it? Yeah, that's all right. OK. Well, I'm going to do both the introduction and the thank you all in one. Okay. I meant to. So you can break it up. Yeah, I meant to say that here we are at Chris Werner's, but so I'll start with that. I'll say, and uh, we'll have fun with it. Sure. Um, I'm at Chris Werner's in Webster, Florida. I've known Chris for a while, and always found him to be gracious and giving. And one of the things I like about Chris is not only will he share his. Um, good experiences, but he'll tell you about the bad ones too. He'll tell you what went wrong and uh, has you, you seem to have no ego as far as I can tell. It's there. It's, okay, all right. <laughs> we all have an ego. <laughs> we all have a little. And an alter ego sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Well, so I want to say thank you for having us. And now it's been that we're a pleasure. finished, it's been, we're on our second day. And I want to say thank you very much for uh, letting me wear you out with questions. I must have six hours of footage. I yeah. can't stuff it all into this thing, so yeah. when you see it, you'll know I've left some out. And now I've got a big task ahead of me trying to edit all this stuff. Yes. Um, well, we appreciate you considering us for this project, uh, being a part of it. We're just honored, and uh, we've known you for how many years did we figure? 20 yeah, some years. 20 something, yeah. Yeah, it's so it's been a pleasure being able to supply you with queens, and our friendship has grown. and. And you've uh, you've introduced us to a plethora of interesting people, so yeah, it's been a mutual. A your name. Yeah, been mutually beneficial. Actually, I don't know if you'll mention the story, but Peter's in our video, and it was a meeting you invited me to speak at uh, quite a few years ago, but, uh, over 10 years ago now, that uh, Peter met me, 
and uh, had an invitation offered to him to come uh, spend some time with us. He met my daughter, Sarah, and now they're married, and we've got uh, three lovely grandchildren, grandsons out, out of that. So we, we, we owe that to Bob. One of these children, sooner along the line, has to have Bob in his name, I think. Yeah, Robert's it's a only great name. name Robert's a great name. <laughs> there you go. There you go. We'll make sure it happens. Okay. All right. What else can I say except for thank you? I, Chris is one of these people. In the beekeeping industry, we all have these really good friends, but we don't physically cross paths very often. I'm a Georgia, North Carolina. You're a Florida, Wisconsin. I Somehow our path crosses every few years, and right. uh, but we talk on the phone a lot. Right. So, yeah. um, I appreciate all of that time, too. I always learn something when we chat. So, again, thank you very much. Thank you, Bob. Really thank you. Hopefully, I'll, it won't be five years before. Hopefully see not. You, <laughs> okay. you bet. We're going to hit the road. Talk to you later. Adios. I'm, I'm really lucky in that they... Uh, will graft from queens I send them so I can get my own stock back. I sent them four queens to graft from back in December, I guess, and he's telling me that that's these queens on this pallet right now. We have excellent grafting material. They could graft at any point at this time. We will be placing cells first, so grafting probably won't start till about noon, but the material is well aged with good so are royal jelly. Are you isolating the queen? Yeah, right now I'm looking for her, but this is my material for today. Normally when I uh, seclude her to an A-frame, the next day I'll come and remove a side so she can continue to lay without me disturbing too much so we're not breaking that that nice brood pattern or brood cycle so you isolate her on that frame for what two days uh 24 hours 24 hours okay. roughly usually by the time i get back to it it's in the afternoon so probably closer to 36 hours okay. but right now i only have out of a nine frame hive i only have six frames that she could potentially be on because i like to leave three frames that could potentially be a frame I can graft from. So it's hatching out brood, and then just so it's on the outside, there's a frame of feed so they don't have to travel as far to go get feed for that. But most of it's capped, so they're not feeding it essentially. It's just trying to keep that brood chamber more centered. There she is. Okay. There's a bob queen. Can I pull this out? To sh Absolutely. Put this out. Yep. Oh, this? You want to pull this can out? I, Here. Is it okay? How about you take this one okay. instead? So this is what they're doing to isolate the queen. They put two of these, they have slots in here where these two things fit in there. And they can put the frame that they want to graft from down there with the queen. And she's isolated on it. And it's the only frame she can lay on because she's stuck there. And uh, four and a half days later, you've got everything you need to graft with. And you know that's how old it is. So I have her, but my frames aren't hatched out as I'd like to see them. So I always set up a hive that's got empties that they've polished. And hopefully this time of year they're not filling it with nectar because there's a little flow. Since this isn't her frame, I like to just set her on the frame and then I'll shake a bunch of her bees on the frame so they go right into that secluded area with her. Otherwise it's going to take a little while for them to realize she's in there. So now she's got bees immediately and she can get to work. 
Yeah, we've learned to do the same thing. Put bees in with her, it takes a little extra time. Yeah. And then even some of my other frames I'll shake over and they have to come through that excluder to get out because my entrance is on the opposite side of that excluder. And then this is actually when I start gaining extra frames because I, I couldn't do a brood swap because there has their brood that was supposed to be hatching. It, you know, my dates obviously can show they're not going to be hatching yet, but we, um, I like to switch out frames just so I'm not gaining so many frames out here. When you add an empty comb in, obviously you're, you're adding a frame every time. Mm -hmm. So once I start collecting a lot of extra frames, I'll, I'll make splits. That's what these girls are over here and just okay. use up my grafting material to make a new hive. So this hive here is our hive where all our grafting material gets stored just so the guys pulling frames know right where it is. They don't have to do any thinking except for coming out and grabbing the one and I number them in order of how I want each queen mother to be grafted depending on like today we'll be grafting for Bob. We graft. So, so all the, today's grafts will be for me in a month? <laughs> right, well, we won't cage That's yours from more, today yeah. for five weeks. <clears throat> five weeks from the graft is... So all of these frames are from my... Nope, just the, the bees. Oh, yeah, okay. B2, C1, C3, B3. Okay. So if it's not specifically for you, like I plan to cage your queens on a Thursday, and or Friday depending on, on the weather goes but what I like to do is we'll just graft for you once a week I'll still use your material it's just it won't be labeled as Bob's because we decipher yours from a different color cell cup so you're using our stuff for your own outfit too aren't you if needed yep usually I'll do you can see my C's here are one two and then my other one didn't lay as I'd liked so I used one of yours for this last graft. Okay. So it all depends on how easily things get set up. And I don't like to usually run them as two stories just because it's extra moving around and extra chance of crushing something you don't want crushed. So with the singles, I do have to run an excluder on top so that queen does not transfer over to an area I don't want her because our uh -huh. lids have that rim on it. Oh yeah. What are your rims, half inch? I believe they're three eighths. Three eighths? Yeah, it looks three eighths. So again, she should only be in these six frames. Sometimes I'll just leave that frame by itself and I'll just take her off and move her over so I'm not pulling my dividers in and out. But this hive here is more focused on collecting nectar. I haven't fed these at all, Bob. I haven't seen that. Um, this is a frame of feed. So odd that this a is a frame of feed. Can, a honey flow can actually get in the way of making queens. Yep. So this will be a, I'll probably actually take a couple frames of feed out and give them a couple more frames of brood just to beef up this population. I see a lot of pollen in there too. Yeah, that's the problem too in the spring is they just come in so hot with that pollen that they don't know where to put it. They just drop it and go. If they just listen to us. Right? We set it up perfectly. It's it's a it's a good thing in another way. Brother Adam was convinced that super good fresh nutrition was uh, help the eggs and the larvae that you're grafting be healthier. Sure. So double edged sword there. Double edged sword there. Yep. It gets cruel. in the way, but it gives you really healthy stock, right. really healthy stuff to graft with. 
So we got her. Should have a nice frame open that's hatched out. Slide this one over to continue to hatch out. Probably at this rate they're going to fill it with feed because that's what we've been seeing here. So I know you've said it once, but sure. when are you going to come back and pull that extra excluder there? For after 36 hours? Yeah, so tomorrow afternoon. So she's stuck and, on there for 36 hours. Yeah, and usually I'll pull out this frame just to make sure I'm not damaging her with mm -hmm. removing that. And I'll also mark my date if she laid properly. Sometimes they figure a way to get out. You know, I'm not perfect, so there's holes in my system. Well, sometimes and it takes them more than she'll tell me another 12 hours too for some reason. Yeah, yeah. If we got extra nasty weather coming, I'll let it stay on there a little bit longer, so we have a potential of that graft being younger when we need it. If we have to postpone a graft, but um, thankfully we've been blessed; we haven't had to do that. You guys shooting for like 12-hour larva? Yeah. Probably 12 to 18. So just so I don't get turned around. Yours are blue dots and this one's yellow. Even mm -hmm. though it's okay. last year. Mm -hmm. Be like, oh, I'm, I'm doing mine now. <laughs> 